morning, everyone, and welcome to St. James's this morning, or maybe you're watching this afternoon or this evening, but welcome. And whether you're here in the building or online or on the phones, welcome. Let's just take a moment just to pray before we start our sung worship. So, Father, we thank you that despite the cares of this world and any anxiety we might feel watching the news or reading headlines, that you're a creator God who loves us and loves us perfectly and who is sovereign over all. Lord, we just ask that you will still our hearts this morning as we come to worship you. I pray that your spirit will be teaching us and guiding us into deeper love of you. Amen. Now we're going to start our service with a time of sung worship and so that should be coming up now so please join in maybe stand if you can and sing along
tremble at his voice all creation rises to rejoice behold our God seated on his throne come let us adore
Amazing grace How sweet the sound What's the Pero la asombrosa gracia y amor de Jesús es más fuerte que la vida y la muerte. Wo auch immer du bist, ruf seinen Namen an. Apologies if you couldn't hear me earlier. I'll try and make sure I'm holding the mic in the, the correct place now. And uh, if I'm not, please do let us know on Zoom and I'll correct it again. And that was amazing, wasn't it? And I think uh, what a great reminder that our God isn't constrained by borders or boundaries. And if he's not constrained by the boundaries of nations, he's certainly not constrained by our inability to meet together today. And so, although we might be in different places, we can have confidence that God is there with us and is still building his church through us and his spirit. So again, welcome to everyone who is now joined and especially welcome to Evelyn, Joan, Heather and Marie who've 
joined via phone. So in a moment, we're going to have a reading, which Bob is going to do. It's going to be Psalm 96. But first, we're just going to have a time of confession, just a time to remember that our God is a God who saves through grace. And as part of that, we confess our sins to God. So hopefully you'll be able to join in the words of the confession with me. So let us return to the Lord our God and say to him, Father, we have sinned against heaven and against you. We are not worthy to be called your children. We turn to you again. Have mercy on us. Bring us back to yourself as those who once were dead but now have life through Christ our Lord. Amen. May the Father forgive us by the death of his Son and strengthen us to live in the power of the Spirit all our days. Amen. So let's pray. Father, we just ask for your spirit to be here amongst us. We ask that you'll be leading us to worship you together in one body and in one voice. And we just pray that your spirit will be working in our hearts now. Amen. Now, if we could have Bob doing the reading of Psalm 96, please. Good morning. The reading is indeed Psalm 96. Sing to the Lord a new song. Sing to the Lord all the earth. Sing to the Lord, praise his name. Proclaim his salvation day after day. Declare his glory among the nations, his marvellous deeds among all peoples. For great is the Lord and most worthy of praise. He is to be feared above all gods. For all the gods of the nations are idols, but the Lord made the heavens. Splendour and majesty are before him. Strength and glory are in his sanctuary. Ascribe to the Lord, O families of nations. Ascribe to the Lord glory and strength. Ascribe to the Lord the glory due to his name. Bring an offering and come into his courts. Worship the Lord in the splendour of his holiness. Tremble before him all the earth. Say among the nations, the Lord reigns. The world is firmly established, it cannot be moved. He will judge the peoples with equity. Let the heavens rejoice, let the earth be glad. Let the sea resound and all that is in it. Let the fields be jubilant and everything in them. Then all the trees of the forest will sing for joy. They will sing before the Lord for he comes, he comes to judge the earth. He will judge the world in righteousness and the peoples in his truth. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thanks, Bob. And now we're going to have Laura preaching to us on respect the name of the Lord. Thank you, Joel. Uh, Wonderful, what a wonderful, wonderful, uh, amazing grace. Wasn't that just amazing, literally? And a reminder of how this has brought us together as a nation over this time. And I just wonder what God is really doing in, in this time with such things. But anyway, let us just pray. Lord Jesus, by the power of your Holy Spirit, speak to us today. Lord, speak through me today. Lord Jesus, I pray that if any words are not helpful, they will just disappear. I pray, Lord, that you inspire me now to throw out anything that is not from you. And Lord, I ask that you just um, give us the ears to hear and the eyes to see what you are saying to us today, um, Lord Jesus. By the power of your spirit, move through us, Lord, that we may proclaim your name in this nation, the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Good morning, everyone. It's wonderful to see you on Zoom. It was lovely to wave at you earlier, and it's lovely. I've got um, Lily, Keisha, Amanda here as well as uh, Joel and Paul. There's only six of us. Yes, and Paul. Hello, Paul. So six of us. Um, so we're keeping it uh, very safe, distance from each other, but it's just lovely to see faces here. 
Um, and it's just um, great to be here. Anyway, this is the third commandment we're doing. I hope you're enjoying our, our, our whole um, commandments, the Ten Commandments. Um, I thought Rosemary did really well last week. Great word, wasn't it? And um, I just sense where God is doing something in this to bring us back to his truths, back to who he is. The third commandment links, of course, with the first two commandments. All the commandments link. They're all about loving at the end of the day and how we love, aren't they? If you love God, and if God is first in your life, the point is that you will respect God and you will use his name well. Of course, I'm going to unpack that a little bit, so don't worry. I've preached before how names are important, haven't I? Um, you will perhaps, I hope, remember. Maybe you don't. Um, I remember um, realizing that my name meant victory. Laurel me vi Laura means laurel, means victory. Laurel, actually. That had a real profound effect on me in my life. Um, you know, I grew up uh, very unsure of myself, but when I realized what my name meant, it actually really a profound effect. I can remember when I was going for my interviews to become a vicar, and the, one of the interviews looked at my profile, and he just said, I just want to say, your life is so victorious. That stays with me now. I was waiting for him to rip me apart, but he was going, how victorious. The point was the reader had picked up things in my life that I'd overcome and seen them as victory. So I hope that my name says something about my character and my life. Now I share that to encourage you to think about what your name says about you. What does your name say about you? Um, and how has that impacted you in any way? Has it? Do you like your name? Do you not like your name? I love my name, but do you like your name? I know my mum never liked her name, but Molly, but beautiful name, I thought, but she didn't like it. But actually, there was very reasons for that. Names matter, don't they? Names really matter. If you were to change your name, what would you change it to, and why would you change it? Have a little think about that. If you were to change your name, what would you change it to, and why, um, and why would you change it? And what name speaks of your reputation and your character? What name tells your story? So let's think for a minute of Bible names that tell us of someone's character. For instance, think of Judas. Judas has come to mean, hasn't it, someone who betrays, actually. I have to say, I have not many, met many people who have called their child Judas these days. I don't think I've ever done a baptism of a Judas, and I've done many, many baptisms in 18 years, I can tell you. Um, a positive name, of course, is Peter. Peter means rock, doesn't it? Or John. John means God is gracious. What a great name. Um, maybe, though, we could also think of him with his nickname. Along with his brother James, they were known as the Sons of Thunder. Perhaps that explains a little bit about their character as well. If you go back and have a look at what we talked about John, it does. Nicknames can be good or bad, but they usually reflect our personality. I have revealed to you that my nickname amongst clergy is Patsy from Adfab. But anyway, I've revealed that in the past. But the point is it says something about the fact that actually I had a lot of fun in my days when I was at college, Bible college, and there were three of us that were kind of known as that because we had fun. We were known for that. So Jesus, Father, and the Holy Spirit are all God, okay? All God. All aspects of God are reflected in their names, their roles, their purposes, and this is very inadequate, I know, um, in a way of describing it, but it's just a helping us to think about their roles, their purposes, who they are. Jesus, Father, Holy Spirit, um, all God, and all show us God's character. For some of us, we might identify more with one than the other. Um, you know, I find Jesus really easy. I love Jesus, brilliant. I found the Father a lot harder because I hadn't grown up with a father figure. So it might be stuff that you have to sit down and think, I need to think about this. Who is the Father to me? What is God the Father to me? Who is Jesus? Who is he? You know, it's, it's good for us to do that. And the Holy Spirit. Who is the Holy the person of the Holy Spirit in my life? Do I allow the Holy Spirit to live in me? In Exodus 20, we are instructed to, to not misuse God's name. So think for a moment about how God's name can be misused as a swear word. How many times have we heard somebody use God's name almost as a swear word? 
Um, I have to say, that is the one thing that really offends me. I find it very hard if someone uses God's name in that way. It makes me cringe, actually. Um, you know, I'd rather hear a, a swear word than hear God's name used as a swear word. Um, when we hear God's new name used, though, it can offend us in a way that's wrong, can't it? It's like, uh, almost like you're talking about my best friend in a way that is awful. But do not use the Lord's name in vain. What does vain in this context mean? Well, it means empty, worthless. Don't throw away God's name. Don't make it mean nothing. God's name means everything. And I'm going to explain why. I'm going to unpack this. In James 3, we're reminded how we can use the tongue to curse and bless, can't we? And in the same way, we can worship God with our tongue and curse him with our tongue. And we are reminded of the power of the word. It reads in verse 9 in James 3, with the tongue we praise our Lord and Father, and with it we curse human beings. In John 1, we're reminded that the word is Jesus. Jesus is the word, the logos, isn't he? And all is created through him, the power of the word. And as we speak out, truth is declared. See, a name is more than a word more than just a word. It's a declaration, it's a description, and there is power in it. A name is more than just any old word. And in Jewish understanding, the name represents the essence and character and reputation of a person. So when you start to think of it in those terms, it changes maybe how you see the use of God's name or the use of any name. When we talk badly of someone, when we talk badly of someone, we do their reputation down. What are we doing? But what does it mean to respect or disrespect God's name? Well, in Leviticus 24, 16, it says, do not curse using the Lord's name, very clearly. Do not blaspheme using the Lord's name. It is so serious, so serious to use God's name in that way. That is because such is a name connected with the character of God. You're actually blaspheming the character of God. You're using his name in a way that says, God is nothing. The Jewish understanding of this commandment is that we must not swear an oath as well, using God's name, that is false. Leviticus 19, you shall not swear by my name falsely. Don't abuse God's name for self-gain, in other words, or to lie. Don't use God in that way. If you say an oath in God's name and you are being false, it's disrespecting God's name. It's disrespecting God. Full stop. And the other misuse can be falsely backing up a vision or a prophetic word for self-gain as well. Jeremiah 23, 25 says, we should not prophesy lies in God's name. When I share a prophetic word that I feel and sense is from God, I never say thus, says the Lord. I always say, I think God might be saying, go and test it. The reason for that is because I see in part and I'm human and I know I fail. So even if I feel that something's from God, I'm very careful because actually to say this is God is controlling if you do it in the wrong way. And we all can be frail in that area, but we need to share what God is saying or we feel God is saying, but always say, I think God is saying, go and test it. Go and see for yourself. Does it comply with the Bible? Does it comply with what God is saying to you at the moment? Important how we use the prophetic word. I've seen where it's been used to control people. It says, God says this now. Go and do it. Very bad. In Exodus 3, 13 to 22, Moses asked God, what is your name? What is your name? But what he's actually really asking when he asks that question is, who are you? What are you like? That is really clear from the response that God gives him. He says, I am who I am in verse 14. God says, I am who I am. And this is followed by God describing his character. He says, I am the God of those who have gone before you. I am the God of those who have gone before you. He is eternal. He says he's eternal. He is the God who watches over his people. He's the God of all ages. He's the God who saves, the God who redeems and frees his people. Can I just ask, because it's echoing back at me, is it? Oh, it's okay. Um, and saves his people. In this, this verse, 
in these verses, the character of God is being described from the simple request to hear his name from Moses. Moses, what is your name? And God says, this is who I am. That tells you how important a name is, how important God's name is. The very first name used for the Bible, I won't try and pronounce that in the Bible, was uh, actually in plural as well, not singular. Reminded that the, the, Jesus, Father and Holy Spirit are all God's names. All are God. And the name also described um, God as mighty, creative, just, the ruler in charge. Of course, God is also known as El Shaddai, that beautiful Amy Grant song, El Shaddai, El Shaddai, which means God Almighty, or the one who said, the one who said, the spoken word again, the power of God's word. It fits, of course, in Genesis, with Genesis as God spoke and created everything. Other names translate as Lord of hosts. That means he is the leader and the king. God is also known as Adonai, the Hebrew for Lord. But one of the best known names is Yahweh, which, which actually is almost indescribable. It's I am, I am, but much more than that. It's Lord, he is mighty. It actually is to do about being the, the relational name of God. That is the relational name of God. It's used over 6,000 times in the Bible, um, I think it's 6,500 and something, but anyway. This is the most important name because his na this name indicates that God is eternal and it is often used to describe God's relationship with me and you, with human beings. It's a very intimate name. It's relational. It suggests God's love, mercy, and salvation, all the things that was said earlier to Moses when he says, I am. Go and read back at it. And in the Psalms, we're going to get to the Psalms, since we read one, God's name appears over and over again, always in a way that is about honoring God. Honoring God. Psalm 96 is attributed to King David. It's thought to be when King David prayed and gave thanks after he'd brought the ark of God to the tent that was prepared in Jerusalem. The ark, of course, containing the stones of the Ten Commandments on them. So it's great that we're using this particular psalm, isn't it, actually, when we're doing the Ten Commandments. But notice how Psalm 96 starts with praise. Praise. And to praise is to lift your voice, isn't it? It's to give thanks and adoration to the one that you love, to praise them. Praise is a, such a good word, isn't it? It's a good action. It's a word and action, isn't it? It is to speak well of. It is to glorify. And we are to sing a new song. But that new song is a good song. It's something positive with our mouths, to praise God's name with our mouth, to sing a new song. We are to speak well of God. His name is linked with his character, you see. And throughout the Psalms, we have given reasons why we should praise his name. Why should we praise Jesus' name? Why should we praise the Father's name? Why should we praise the Holy Spirit's name? Why? Because God is good. Because God created us. Because God loves us. Because God changed my life. Because he is my God and I am his. We are his people. He is our God. That's said so many times through scripture. And in Psalm 96, we have a call to the people who respond to the mercy and salvation of their God as he loves them first. God loves us, so what's your response to him? He loves you so much. He made you like you are. He made you who you are. When you say the name of someone that you love, it raises up, doesn't it, all sorts of feelings in you. And it raises up knowledge of the character of that person. And I don't know about you, but when I love someone, I want to say their name positively, in a good way. And that should be our reaction to the name of Jesus. Jesus who died for us, who rose again, who loves us so much that he came to earth for you, for me. 
Jesus who reveals the Father, the loving Father, the good Father, the shepherd. And we should be intrigued to know the person of the Holy Spirit, to call on the Holy Spirit, to say, Lord, Holy Spirit, come, be with me. The power of God living in us, the power of God on the earth to change the earth, to change the nations. We need to lift up the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit today. And if we concentrate on one area of God's name, we miss out on other aspects. It's important that we come to know Jesus so that we can know the Father, so we can know the power of the Spirit. And all three are important. Spend time reflecting on who God is as Jesus the Son, as the Father, as the Holy Spirit in your life. What do they mean to you? What difference do they make in your life? One God, Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Here the psalmist in Psalm 96 is asking the believer to speak well of God, to praise the name of God because he has saved us, because of what he has done in your life and my life and in the life of the people. We're all joined together as God's family. We all belong. God deserves to be praised. And it isn't just a local action. It's not just for here and where we are, is it? Here we are encouraged to praise his name in all the world. He owns the world. Praise his name. Praise his character. Praise God. It says, declare that God is good across this world. In verse 5, we link in with the second commandment. Get rid of other idols because they are not real. Do you speak about some other idol more than you do about God. It's God who created everything. He is the one who made you, who made me. It's the one who is real. Jesus Christ reveals him to us. Proclaim only his name. And I wonder, I just wonder how much time you spend with the name of Jesus, with the name of the Father and the Holy Spirit living on your lips, the living God on our lips, in our words, in our vocabulary. And it goes on to say, ascribe to the Lord. That means give to the Lord what he deserves. God deserves. What does he deserve from us? He deserves my love because he loved me first and he created me. I'm here because of him. And we are to worship our God. That is to give worth with our life and words to our God, our King, our Lord, Yahweh. That's the opposite of the word vain, isn't it? That means worthless and empty. We are to give him worth with our life, with my mouth. This whole psalm is about how we love and respect God in word and action. The whole psalm links in with the prophetic words God has been given as well this year. We were talking, you know, at the beginning of the year, we feel that God is calling us to really get into worship and worship in a new way and get our hearts right before him. We are to worship with our heart, our mind, and our soul and our words. Lifting up his name. There is power in the name of Jesus. There is power in God's name. There's power to change everything. That's why we're praying on a Monday, um, you know, for the end of COVID. That's why I'm fasting on a Monday, to end COVID, because I know that there's power in prayer. There's power when we lift up God's name in this nation. What does it mean to praise God's name, not just to praise God? Well, it means do not be false with God. Proclaim his name as an act of understanding that you of the character of God in his name. When you use God's name, you're talking about his character. You're talking about who God is, the person of God. And how do we make an offering that gives glory to God's name in verse 8? Well, learn to worship God with your mouth. Do not make an oath in God's name that is false. Do not misuse God's name. Give glory to him. Let his name be written on your heart and your lips. Let his name be written on your heart and your lips. Our thanks to God should inspire us to lift his name up, to proclaim his victory over death, 
to be full of thanksgiving that Jesus, Jesus Christ, came and fulfilled law so that we can live in grace, so that we can be free. His name frees us. God's name frees us. In a place where you don't know what to do, call on his name. Call on the Holy Spirit. Call on Jesus. Call on the Father. They will be there. They are there. God is with us. There is power in the name of Jesus. To praise God in name is to praise God as we know him. To praise his reputation. Just as we praise a family name when they come from good stock, if you like. A family with a good reputation, you know, when we use their name, we say good family name. Well, we are family, you and I. You and I that believe. We're stuck with each other. Praise God for that. I'm glad I'm stuck with you. Because we belong to the same family name. We who know Jesus are sons and daughters of the living God. And to proclaim our God's name is to know that we are part of the family that has that good name. That is, we are royalty. You and I are royalty in the kingdom. And we have a good name because our God is the I am. He is the creator. He is the king. He is Adonai, Yahweh, his mighty savior, the word. He is creator. An offering of worship to our God in his name is about our attitude. What is your attitude like in worship, in giving your life to God? And our awareness of all that God is worth to us and all that we are worth to him, so much so that he came to get us. Came to earth to get us. It's an acknowledgement of who God is. So the questions I want to give us now and I want us to think about are simply, so who is God to you? Is he the saviour Jesus? Is he the one who loves us, the Father? Is he the one who fills you with the power of the Holy Spirit? What do their names mean to you? What does the Father, what does Jesus and what does the Holy Spirit mean to you? What does it say to you? What do you struggle with about God's name? The other things, do you declare your love for God in your worship? When you are worshiping, when you are giving yourself to God, are you declaring your love for him or is it about you or about God? Is it about declaring his name or feeling good for you? Is it about actually getting him with that relational God who loves us? And do you use the name of God in the wrong way? Or have you got a wrong understanding of it? Have you forgotten to link it with God's character and say, actually, God's name and God's character are the same? How can we change our attitude? Let us pray. Lord Jesus, we ask by the power of your Holy Spirit that you speak to us now. Help us to have, Lord Jesus, a real revelation of what your name means. Help us, Lord Jesus, to move by the power of your spirit in this nation to declare your name in power across the world to see change. Fill us with the power of your Holy Spirit now, Lord, that we may be different, that we may, with our mouths, declare, Lord, you are Lord. Amen. Um, God bless you. Um, I'm looking outside and it's absolutely <laughs> snowing now. It is. It's amazing. <laughs> bless. Wow. Thanks, Laura. And uh, what a challenge to us to praise God's name and to make it known. Now it's time for our notices and so we could have... Mabel. No, sorry i've skipped something out That's, i can't read a can't read a schedule that's not great sorry we've got prayers now with sue good morning everyone yeah it's snowing here as well so 
let's take this time to bring our prayers to God. Father God, we thank you for your love and care for us, that you know each one of us and provide us, your children, with all that we need. We thank you for those working to alleviate the effects of poverty in our own country and around the world. Lord, we pray for a fairer distribution of the world's resources, for an end to greed and corruption at all levels of society. Lord, teach us to be a generous, open-handed people who freely share what we have with those who have less so that no one goes without. Lord, we thank you for the peacemakers. We pray for an end to wars and conflicts that mean people are made homeless, stateless, without the means to earn a living and provide for their families. For refugees living in camps far from home, in countries where they're not really welcome, and all they want to do is go home in peace. We thank you, Lord, for the many places and ways in which we can find you. Walking in fields or parks, reading, listening to music, just sitting, ready to hear you as you speak to us. Lord, help us to listen for your voice. Give us peace, Lord, when our thoughts tumble around in the dark hours of the night, when we see no end to what troubles us, Lord. Help us to listen for your voice. Lead us to the new day. Comfort and strengthen those who mourn, those who are filled with sadness, who miss the warmth and company of family and friends. May we follow you along the right path as we go through each day in lives that honour your name. Help us to be prepared to stand up, stand out, be the exception, do things your way in our personal lives, with our families and friends, in our neighbourhood and the wider community, and as you did for us, bear any cost. We pray for governments, world leaders, for the new president of the United States of America. As he called for the restoration of the soul of his nation, we pray for a healing of all the nations of the world, that compassion, mercy and understanding will cast out anger and bitterness and lead us to a more peaceful world. We pray that the Holy Spirit will convict those in power in their dealings with each other. Father, in the days we are going through at the moment, we know you are by our side, drawing us close, protecting us. Give us strength to do whatever is required of us. Thank you, Lord, for those who put their lives at risk every day in their workplace. We thank you for the dedication of the many thousands who are ordinary people but have been doing their ordinary jobs in an extraordinary way for months. We pray for them and their families. Lord, as we pray for an end to the pandemic, and as you bring us out of these dark times, we know there are good times to come. We know you have a plan for all your people, that the world will be made right and we will be there. I just want to read the words of Psalm 23. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I, will, I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Let's close our time of prayer and thanking God by saying together the prayer Jesus himself taught us. 
our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Thanks, Sue. And now it's the bit that I was so excited to get onto, and that is uh, notices. So if we can have those up, please. I think our first one is um, text giving. So if you're wanting to give, then all the details are there on that slide. So do please do that. Then on Monday and Wednesday mornings, there's the opportunity to meet via Facebook to pray together. And that's between 8.30 and 8.45 in the morning. And some people are fasting and praying until 6 p.m. on a Monday to end COVID. So if that's something you'd like to join, please do join it on Facebook. And that would be great. And then another thing that is starting this week is on Thursday, there's a Bible study happening. So a four-week Bible course, and it, they stand alone. So if you can't make all of them, do please just attend one or the, the ones that you can attend. And if you'd like to do that, then either take the details from here or let Laura know that you'd like to join. And the subject this week will be when we cry out. So when we cry out to God, what does that look like? Okay. The prayer project this week is Park Road. So please do hold Park Road in your prayers this week. And then Winter Quest. Paul's just going to come and tell us about Winter Quest. Good morning, everybody. So, it is a bit echoey, isn't it? Wait a minute. That's better. So, it's Winter Quest coming up, and praise the Lord, I am looking out at the um, door of church, and it's almost a white blanket of snow. Well, as Laura said with the psalm in the sermon, we can celebrate every season, and David has and this has been praying for snow because the winter quest is starting. And he's asking to go out, take some photos. I think everybody could get a photo today and send them in to David. He will then put a video like he has done for the autumn, the spring, and the summer. And we'll have the full um, seasons in one go. And hopefully we can celebrate the snow because it's fabulous. I want to see some snowmen. I want to see snowball fights. Have some fun. Be creative and send in the photos. And he wants them sent in by 7th of March. I think you'll be able to send them in by the end of today, by the looks of it. So make the most of it. Be creative. Okay. And I think we're going to go over to Fiona now, but I've got to spotlight you. So as I'm walking back to the sound desk, um, I will. St- the spotlight over to Fiona. David might have to stop um, sharing the screen. Yep. So remove spotlight. Morning, all. Am I on, Paul? Yep. Yep. Am I go good on. to go? Yeah. Okay. Morning, all. Um, just got a quick notice about night shelter. You'll recall David doing a video um, with a man device from the um, homeless action Barnet together in Barnet a while back and they're still working on their project to get hubs set up for um, the homeless but in the interim they've got a really exciting project they've arranged with the hotel in Golders Green um, that they will house the um, clients overnight but what they're asking is for communities to get together to provide breakfast and evening meal for the um, 
clients of the night shelter we'd like to be involved we're a bit tardy in getting up and running some of the others a lot of the other communities have already volunteered and got themselves on the list um, we have sent an email out which you may have received if you're on our night shelter list or from Bryony this week if if you are interested in helping we're looking for people who could volunteer to either cook food or to deliver food to the hotel in Golders Green it'll be once a week we're looking probably for Sunday could be Saturday we will have to update you on that um, but if you could get involved if you're willing to get involved that would be great just let David or I know or Tracy um, or Bryony and, and um, as I say we need to get up and running a bit quickly because they've actually said they're starting that this week not that we need to be on there doing it this week but obviously we want to kind of get involved if we can so if you can volunteer if you're willing if you're able um, that would be brilliant they will also accept financial donations to to help the project along they are still looking to get their project going um, the more permanent project of these hubs which is fantastic but in the meantime as I say we're looking for people who might be able to volunteer to cook food or to deliver food lots of covid um, things in place to try and make sure we all keep safe and comply with all those rules and guidance um, more details from us if you want them as I say email uh, the office or get in touch with David, Tracy or myself if you can and would like to get involved. Thank you. Bye. It's me again. So sorry, I'm coming back from the sound desk. This is the only way I get my exercise. So I'm back again. Two things to mention. The first thing coming up is the the soonest is the quiz, um, which is the 6th of February, starting at 6.30, and it's on Zoom. No teams are needed this time because we've worked out a way that we can all enjoy, and you'll never know who's going to win this one. We're going to put you into the breakout rooms, and each breakout room for each round will be, give you your individual score. And each round, you will go into a different breakout room with different people. This means each individual have got a great chance of winning, but also you get to have a drink and a snack with different members of our church. It's all about the relationships, and this is a perfect chance to come together, to celebrate together, and to have some fun and a laugh. So that is 6.30 on the 6th of February. Please join. doesn't matter if you don't know any answers or you know all the answers. You will still have a chance of winning, okay? So, and then the next thing which we wanted to let you know about is we're going to have a family service on the um, 14th of February, which is Valentine's Day, but it's not about Valentine's Day. It is about love, but it's also the start of Lent three days later, and we're going to combine it all, so it's love and Lent starting, and we're going to do a family service on the 14th of February, starting at four o'clock I believe. Lots of information will go out and what we're going to do is going to be music, scripture, prayers, but we're then going to challenge you to go out to do a some sort of art or Lego building on the scripture we've done. So you'll have 15 minutes as a family to produce something and come back and Reverend Laura is going to not vote on it but she's going to You can do well. Laura says she wants to paint as well, so she's going to paint something, but she's also going to look at all your creations and um, judge them. Yeah, we're, we're still having a tent because it's a family service, Laura. From yeah, so we're still having a normal service on the Sunday. This is for families, children, but anybody be, can come. And it will start at four o'clock, a bit like a messy church, but we will have fun and we will be creative and we will come together as a family. Okay, see you then. Bye. So we now have an opportunity for just a reminder that prayer ministry is available on Zoom if anybody would be interested in that and if you would be interested in receiving prayer then please do contact christine rich or laura um, and they will arrange some prayer ministry now we've got a food bank notice great
Hello. Uh, I've put I put the iron down quickly enough that I could come over and do it. So uh, you can see, see the background and I can see the snow in the background as well, which has been lovely to watch today. Um, so our food bank shortages um, for this week um, are sugar. So either the 500 gram ones or <laughs> She has to get in the picture all the time, doesn't she? Uh, either 500 gram ones or kilogram bags of sugar, please. Um, pasta sauce, juice and squash, and then um, tea bags. But the small ones, so like a 50, an 80 or a 100. Um, which some people have been donating the 300 ones, which is great in some ways, but isn't because I can't fit them in the bags to be able to get people to take them home. So we can have the small bags. Um, the thing that we're particularly short of if you're really desperate and you just want to get one thing or something is sugar. We are really desperate for sugar, please. Thank you, guys, and keep safe. Enjoy the snow. Thanks, Martin. And do remember to sign up for the Sunday services on Facebook or YouTube if you don't do it via Zoom. So it's now time for a blessing. So. Sorry, that was just a quick question over whether I'd skipped Peter Zoom Room, but no, I had got that one correct, and there was no Peter Zoom Room this week. Um, so let's now just take a moment to just hear the blessing. So, the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen. So now, as we say goodbye to those of you who've joined on Zoom and you go into breakout rooms, just a reminder of Laura's questions. And they were, who is God to you? What do the names Jesus, Father, and Holy Spirit mean to you? Do you declare your love for God in your worship? And do you use the name of God in the wrong way. How can you change this? And that's the end of our service today. So I hope you all have a good week. And bye. And now you're getting into breakout rooms. So enjoy.